For insight, let's go to our featured guest of the morning. He's Barry Schwartz, partner and portfolio manager at Baskin Wealth Management. First of all, good morning. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Paul. We've got a ton to talk about. Let's tackle tech resources first. Uh, your thoughts on where this is going? Well, tech is like the last holdout. You and I are old enough to remember yep. when Canada had Inco, Alcan, Falcon Bridge, Noranda, Potash, and now Glencore, which is... Uh, has acquired so many Canadian companies over the years, Viterra and Falcon Bridge through acquiring Extrata. Now the final guy is Tech Resources, and it's all about copper, Paul. It's all about Tech's uh, plan to double its copper production over the next few years. Many people are saying that the world is going to be short copper. It's needed to produce all these electric vehicles, and uh, the copper is an, a, an exciting <laughs> product in this environment and tech has it and so um, I, I assume Glencore is going to win this I mean I don't see how tech can fight this off Glencore is just going to keep coming back with better offers well one way it could fight them off is, is the through the use of the multi-voting shares but you seem to be saying that pressure will be brought to bear there well, well Akival is already saying he would support a takeover of the metals business yes. by another player that's different are you, are, do you believe that enough pressure will be brought to bear that maybe he may need to relax his position on Glencore as well? At some point, there's going to be too good, uh, the offer is going to be too good for them to, how, how can we say no uh, at, at the end of the day if the offer is too good? And I, Glencore, is, I think, has made it very clear that they're going to keep pursuing this deal, and it's all because of the copper production. Um, I, I don't know what Kievel has in mind and how to fend this off. There may be uh, some partnerships that they could create. Obviously, as a Canadian, we'd love to keep this resource in Canada. But we operate in the public markets, and public markets are uh, for the shareholders, for growth, for the best profits possible, and, and that may not be possible with uh, Glencore, who seems to always get what they want. There, we just saw a quote from uh, Norman Keevil. It's quite a striking statement that the company uh, released on his behalf. The three companies, again, that are reported by both Bloomberg News and the Globe and Mail to be interested in buying the metals business are Valet. Valet is the owner of Inco. Uh, Barry referred to that takeover. Now, now many years old. It is the owner of the uh, Sudbury assets of Inco. Anglo American, a huge, uh, I believe that's a South African company, and Freeport McMoran, uh, based in in uh, Louisiana. It became famous many, many years ago because it was the buyer of the Briex huh. uh, gold mining uh, quote-unquote deposit. We all know how that ended. But Freeport uh, is a giant of the global copper mining uh, industry as well. And in terms of other developments, uh, Kievel has released his statement and uh, Glass Lewis uh, which is a shareholder advisory firm, says it opposes uh, the, pro the proposal backed by management and the board at Tech, and that is the split of the metals business from the coal business. Uh, and uh, Gl uh, Glass Lewis says uh, shareholders would be better off uh, by at least considering or giving more consideration to the uh, offer from uh, Glencore. We'll be speaking later in this program with the managing editor for Canada at Bloomberg News, Derek DeCluet, on this story. In the meantime, let's continue talking with Barry Schwartz. You've got some thoughts on the soaring population of Canada, driven in large measure by immigration, mm -hmm. and what this could mean to Canadian stocks. You've well, got some names to toss out there. Totally, and this is a good segue from tech resources. We, ha we have such unbelievable assets here in Canada, and clearly we have uh, such strong population growth over the last few years. Uh, I think in 2022, we had faster growth in population than some African nations, the fastest growth of any advanced nation in the world. And Trudeau and the government says they're looking to add at least 500,000 new immigrants for the next few years. That's going to be fantastic. I mean, this is a zero-sum game. Uh, if other countries lose, we win. Mm -hmm. And this will benefit so many of our companies. I mean, 500,000 new immigrants, a lot of them want to come, of course, to the major cities, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver. And a lot of them are coming, obviously, to Ontario as well. So, And as soon as they get here, they need to find a place to live. One of their first stops is uh, surely to one of the providers of cell phone services. Absolutely. Uh, they need banking services. They need to go shopping at our grocery stores. They need to eat. They need to furnish their, uh, their houses, their apartments. Obviously, some of the major winners will be the apartment rental companies. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest, of course, is Canadian Apartment REIT. Uh, you, uh, I believe you own, on behalf of clients, all four of these stocks, among others, correct? That's correct, and I, I own them personally as well. Uh, Canadian Apartment REIT. 
Um, although a lot of cities, a lot of provinces in uh, Canada do have rent control, when someone moves out, though, they can charge market-based rents. Canadian Department Reed is uh, seeing 20% uplift in some cities, especially in Toronto, when people move out. I mean, that's just striking. So uh, obviously that's an unsustainable <laughs> rental percentage growth, and we don't necessarily want that to happen at those fast rates going forward. But no question, uh, some of these apartment REITs, uh, ones obviously in Alberta, should do very well as, as well because uh, oil and gas is recovering, and that's a uh, there's there's a lot more of, uh, opportunities there in, in Alberta as well. There was a commercial uh, run by Tim Horton several years ago uh, that which showed a, uh, a man uh, welcoming his incoming family. He was already mm -hmm. here in Canada. His family was coming in from a uh, from a foreign nation to live in Canada, and the first thing he gave his wife at the airport early one morning was a cup of Tim Horton's coffee, and he said, "Welcome to Canada." Do you think you think this there's something to that, that Tim Hortons is another beneficiary here. Very smart. And uh, you, you see the ads on TV for Tim Hortons and McDonald's. They are hiring. They need staff. And they need to staff up very quickly because there's going to be a lot of demand for Tim Hortons, for quick service restaurants, for drive through restaurants. Um, we've heard anecdotally from uh, many of the, uh, uh, we'll call them the commercial REITs, that lease out to uh, quick service restaurants, that the demand is off the charts. They're, they, they are going to need to build a lot more Tim Hortons and Popeyes going forward. So, I mean, there's really no end, Paul, to the types of companies that will benefit. Railroads, of course, we need to move goods. So uh, we're bullish on Canada. We're trying to think of ways to increase our Canadian exposure, especially with the Canadian dollar as low as it is. And the segue from tech resources with the Canadian dollar being so low, the U.S. dollar being high, you can expect many more offers and takeovers of, of all of our companies.